everybody. You welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. I'm Christy Brower here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey, Katie. Hello. How's it going? It's so good. Yeah, well, very good to uh, get to present this case. It's an important one, and right. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Yeah. We are, and we've been working on this case for a couple of weeks, trying to gather enough information to be able to put it together. Mm-hmm. That's um, this is we're considering this an, an MMIW case. Yeah. Um, because this person is uh, uh, part native, mm-hmm. but it's a very different case than what we have presented in the past. Yeah. So the person that um, the victim in this case has many different names Um, at home back in Tennessee. They were transitioning really to non-binary. They'd had top surgery, which means they'd had their breasts removed. And they were going by Oliver Jackson and using the pronouns he, him. Mm -hmm. So trans female to non-binary i guess is what we would call it we want to be really careful and really respectful about this person's identity and names yeah it's a really important part of what we do Uh um in speaking with his best friend who i have some direct information from He was going by Poe at the time of his death. And so we're just going to use the name Poe. But we wanted to say Oliver Jackson for identifying purposes because most of the uh, like stuff that's in the news and the police and that kind of thing, they Mm -hmm. were going with that name. Right. Uh, There's also a news article with an aunt who uses this person's dead name and... uh, pronouns. Now, the thing you have to understand is that their transition was quite new. And Mm -hmm. this aunt did not know anything about this person transitioning to non-binary. Okay. And so this is sort of all over the place, but it was something that we wanted to address right at the very beginning. Yeah. Because it's a really important part of being respectful of a person's identity. And yeah. once a person passes away, as particularly a trans or non-binary person, we see in the media all kinds of uh-huh. disrespectful use of their dead name, of their wrong pronouns, yeah. all of those things. And uh, we that's wrong in every yeah. way. And so we wanted to address that right up front. Uh-huh. So we are going to be referring to this person as Poe with he, yeah. him pronouns, because according to his best friend, that is what he was using at the time of his death. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about Poe. Yeah. Poe was murdered. Gosh. <laughs> Sorry. Too many uh, screens open here. Poe was murdered near Slab City in California. We're going to talk about what Slab City is and kind of where that is. Poe was 21 years old at the time of his death and was from Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. He was also known by the name Legion uh, in Slab City. So want to just say that too now that so that people hear that you know and this happened on the 26th of may 2021 so this is a very recent death yeah and that's one reason why it's taken us a little while to get things together on this because we couldn't get enough information quite until now but there's a lot we want to share about this person and where they were and what happened to them because it's important. And this is um, part of handling MMIW cases is sometimes the research gets a little bit intense. So I'm going to start with some things that Poe's best friend, who is an anonymous source, uh, told me. This person was talking with Poe two or three times a month. Uh, She did know that they had contact with his mom that he had contact with his mom and a few other friends. 
um, he couldn't actually make daily contact because there were issues with internet and connectivity. And so usually he made contact yeah. with somebody weekly. Well, in Slab City, that would be a feat. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it, it certainly would. It certainly would. So around the time that Poe left for Slab City, he started having seizures. Oh. Um, it was never actually known why, although there were some suspected medical issues for Poe, particularly Ehlers-Danlos uh, oh. syndrome was was considered for Poe, and so there were some there were some concerns about going so far away from home and not having access to medical care because the grand mal seizures were um, unidentified or well not, not yeah un. Yeah, unidentified. They didn't know why they were happening. Um, I will say could have had something to do with drug use. Um, Post friend also said that they could have had something to do with a prior injury. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So there was quite a bit of... Um, Poe had a pretty challenging short life. Mm -hmm. And Poe had been um, a, a, Black, a Black Lives Matter protester and had actually been injured. Uh, the protest had also experienced some physical abuse as a child. So not sure where those mm -hmm. had come from. So he went to Slab City, which Katie's going to talk to us about here in just a minute. Slab City is in California, in Imperial County, California. Mm -hmm. And it is sort of a renegade outpost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right. And mm -hmm. Poe went there because he wanted to live off the grid. Mm -hmm. And he was really still trying to find this place in the world. He had recently been diagnosed as potentially having um, being on the autism spectrum. So he was dealing with some history of trauma and being neurodivergent and then also potentially having Ehlers-Danlos. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to go somewhere where he could be accepted. And this is where he felt he should go. He also had been doing quite a bit of activism recently and wanted to do some things to help the trans community there in Slab City and make sure that they had better access to resources. Poe definitely did because, first of all, Poe had top surgery. Yeah. And you will notice in a video that I'm going to show you that Poe has facial hair, which indicates that Poe was actually on testosterone. Yeah. Uh, so Poe obviously had access to resources that right. other trans and non-binary people don't have. So many. And so so he many. Want, yeah, so and many. The lack so, of health care in the trans community is astonishing. It is. It is. And he yeah. wanted to be able to help people to get access to that. Mm -hmm. Now, we found that he is... His father was a descendant of the Wyandot, W-Y-A-N-D-O-T people, which made him um, native to some extent. His father died in a car accident before he was born. He's had so much trauma in his life. His dad died before he was born. Uh, he had a sister who was murdered, I believe. Oh and a brother who has a serious trouble with addiction and mom who struggles with some mental health. And so mm -hmm. it's been a rough go for Poe yeah. in many ways. Um, but the way that we found this case was actually on um, the MMIW national uh, Facebook page. They right. shared uh, this information about Poe's death and we went, okay, you know, this is really important because trans individuals, mm -hmm. native, white, particularly black, are at so much higher risk of being murdered. It's just, yeah. it's horrifying how much higher risk they are at being murdered. And, yeah. you know, Poe in his own transition was also trying to help other people in theirs. Yeah. Poe was found in a canal near Slab City. Mm -hmm. Um the heat, it was very hot at the time, of course. This is Southern California, almost to the Mexico border. And so they've had a very difficult time uh, determining exact time of death or day of death. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, they do know that Poe died of multiple stab wounds. Uh, the police in Imperial County, the, the sheriff there, they are investigating Poe's death. Mm -hmm. um, it was reported to me that they were out in Slab City getting forensic information and that kind of thing. But there's a lot they don't know. And there's a lot they're not sharing, obviously, because this sure. is an open investigation. Poe was in Slab City with a partner. This partner's name is being withheld for their own um, protection, honestly, and for their, they've chosen to be anonymous. They did return to uh, Tennessee, to Nashville, uh, after Poe's death. And that's really all I know about them. I thought, Katie, before you share with us about Slab City, we would share a video. This is actually a video of Poe being interviewed or just sort of having a conversation about Slab City and his experience there. And I, I felt like this was important just to kind of get a feel for the place that he's staying, has been staying and sort of the experience he's been having and the, and the mindset that he was experiencing before he was killed. So I'm going to show this. I'm just going to. So what kind of YouTube uh, do you guys run? What kind of YouTube channel? This? Exactly. I do vlogs and stuff, and I sit in my closet and tell stories. I don't even yeah, do I just go around and venture in. Yeah, I know. He asked me to come out. So and we have know. a buddy who makes vlogs and pranks, and he's pretty popular. And we're just, he came here twice and made awesome videos with Jerry. And, um, he didn't ever, I know two months, so I don't know if he was here for the issue I know Larp always makes friends with tourists um, but I don't know if they'll consent to being on camera I don't know who will or who won't you always have to ask consent you know we've been told that consent's a big thing we consent's, gotta ask consent's the biggest thing around here like really? people do whatever they want as long as everybody around them is consenting to what's happening nope. like it's like huge what was your story man like, what happened <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. so my fiance and I got here, my partner and I got here a month and a half, two months ago, I think, and um, three days after being here, um, we were, you know, we had set up our camp and we were now bored and looking for stuff to do, so we wandered into the handlebar we'd never been in before, and it was Rocky Horror Night, which oh, is shit. what they do every Wednesday. Right on. They play the Rocky Horror Movie and the bartenders do drag, because it's a gay uh, Yeah, it's club. usually what the, yeah. It's a gay the Rocky bar. Horror Nights do. Yeah, and it's, um, so, it was so fucking fun, and we did <clears throat> Acid with Lerp. Never met Lerp before. Did Acid with Lerp. Right on. Um, and I start meeting all these people and like everybody everybody is just instantly like I love you and we're like I love you and it's like this whole thing and um, I was not in there at the moment I had gone out into the desert with <laughs> three people looking for a backpack I never found when I got back she gone. when I got back shit was going insane I walked into the bar and somebody was like Yo, it looks like a prolapse out there. And somebody was like, what? And it was like, yeah, his like guts are hanging out. Oh, no. And this dude, Tracker, had like stabbed himself. Oh, like, himself? Like, himself? Open? himself. He had like... Why? Gutted himself? Jesus. Yeah, that's some samurai so, shit. So it was weird as fuck. He was really shwilly. He was fucking drunk He's as what? fuck. And you're on shwilly, acid. And you're drunk on... as fuck. Dude, shwilly? Acid, that's a like, great fucking and... word. I like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what had happened was um this he was like talking to this guy dolphin who's not here anymore and not welcome <laughs> but he was talking to him and he was like getting i don't know exactly what he was saying but he was getting like weird and like transphobic he was talking about like confused people and like gender sh sh fuck shit yeah. and um he like <clears throat> i don't know exactly how it went down i know dolphin wound up getting shot in the arm with a bb uh oh. Like a, like a pellet gun? Like a pellet gun. And it went septic and he almost died. <gasps> oh shit. Jesus. Is there like a doctor here? Like, like is. I don't think there's any slab doctors, brother. Like, is there, I don't know. Some homie that's <laughs> a doctor, like, you know? So Cracker had like pulled out his knife and 
it, according to him, and these are words I heard him say, he like he said, I looked up and saw nothing but friendly faces. Yeah. And he was like, but I have this knife now, and it, somebody has to be stabbed, so. Oh. What? Makes, oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I gotta stab somebody, so I might as well stab myself. Dude, drugs, man. Dude, <laughs> dude, dude was a lot. Like he he doesn't live here he sounds anymore. Sounds like a lot. Like <laughs> I, the point the character. I met him later in, a, in another bar, and he was like, I could stab myself again. Oh, so he like, lived? Yeah, he lived. No, he's 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 fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like night chipping too much anymore. After I had that grandma seizure, it was like oh, grandma seizure, yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, and but I like day stopped. tripping. Yeah, my heart stopped. It was, yeah. I was in the hospital You're twice. Too young for in that Tennessee. business. Okay, so that's a little bit of an interview about what it's like to live in Slab City and kind of some of the experiences that Poe was having. Obviously, some pretty challenging and scary stuff going on there. Yeah. Um, you know, Poe had indicated to his friend uh, not long before he was killed that he was planning to come back home. He was ready to be home. He'd actually been in Slab City for five-ish months, somewhere around the end of December, early January is when he got there, and he was killed on May 21st, is that right? Yeah, no, May 26th, sorry. So he'd been there almost almost six months, Yeah. and he'd indicated to a friend that he was ready to come home, that he'd had the experience he went there to get. Um, you know, we, we know so little about his murder, yeah. um, mostly because you know there's just there's just a sheriff's office that is investigating it and they're not really sharing anything there's just very little known the fact that we now know where he was found on what day he was found and his cause of death is actually a huge move forward yeah oh yeah that's more than was done for quite some time yeah yeah so we're keeping a very close eye on this case mm -hmm. Um, because people in the trans community who are so very vulnerable, um, and that was the work that Poe wanted to do yeah. for himself as well as other people. I just feel like it's, it's our responsibility to keep an eye on his case yeah. and try to, you know, bring attention to it in whatever way that we can. Yeah. But we wanted to share some things about this place, Slab City, because you may or may not know what Slab City is. And this is something I feel like it's important for all of us to be aware of, particularly for if someone goes missing. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. I'm just going to show some pictures, Katie, while you give us some more info on Slab City. Sure. So Slab City... Uh, is in the southeastern corner of the California's Sonoran Desert. It's 45 miles away from the Mexican border. It is actually an abandoned World War II military training base. It is unincorporated. It's not actually recognized as a town. It is on a map and there is a community here, just not really an official community. Mm -hmm. Some people have really referred to Slab City as being a lawless town. In a sense it is because there is no police presence, but there is the Imperial County Sheriff's Office that is there if needed. Mm -hmm. There are about 150 permanent year-round residents, but in the winter months, there's quite a few people that RV there. And so it grows to around 4,000 for a while in the winter. Uh, it has lots of names, Slab City, the last free place on earth, the last lawless place on earth. Uh, like Poe indicated, there's a lot of anything goes there as long as everyone's okay with it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, these, a lot of people that come to live here are, they want off the grid. And there's very limited resources here as far as there's like, not really much in the way of water, electricity, services, there just isn't. And so there's also no cost to live here. 
it's people just kind of erect their uh, slab, their home built out what of pallets and what do they supplies. make them out of? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Whatever they can scavenge. Mostly it looks like a lot of people do bring mm -hmm. in like RVs and old campers and things like that. And yeah, you just, it but there's a reason so, it's called slab city, right? Right. Because there's all of these slabs, the concrete slabs that the, uh, the military left there. Yeah. And so people are building upon these slabs that are just kind of freestanding on the, uh, the sand. So uh, with that, Christie's cats will play us a song. <laughs> Every time, you guys, they can go without playing the piano all freaking day until I get on the show to do on the air to do a show, and then you know what they're going to do? They're going to play us a song. You know they will. It was uh, sort of you know appropriately ominous. It was. There's a lot of art. Everything's considered art. There's a lot of random art displays and kind of trash turned into art kinds of things. I thought this picture was especially uh, telling our lady of lost souls and beautiful freaks. There's kind of a Jesus following. There's quite a few uh, crosses. There's a whole on the outside of Slab City. There's this whole like Jesus uh, art installment. And so I, I think that uh, it would be fair to say that not everyone there is religious, but there's some kind of a an undertone of that. Yeah, I thought this was an interesting uh, painting it of John Lennon. Like, yeah, John Lennon. As Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of uh, interesting art like that. So, you know, again, there is some kind of police presence as far as the sheriff is concerned, but things like cell phone and internet are pretty patchy. Uh, you know, to like to have Wi-Fi. Uh, electricity is mostly non-existent to the best of my knowledge. Water, you're pretty much living off the grid and it's the people that live there want that. Now, yeah. who lives there? Well, it seems like they do have a pretty good problem with drugs mm -hmm. and with mental illness and, you know, and a fair amount of what we would consider crime, you know, and Yet people that live there, uh, you know, they're they're finding they're forging their own path. They're forging their own way. Mm -hmm. They aren't interested in what you know the television or what news has to tell them. They're figuring life out on their own. And it looks like there's a real growing trans community there. You know, yeah. they're really or trying even to get just off LGBT. The grid and, yeah, out of mainstream, so they can be safe, so they can figure themselves out. Yeah, they call um, themselves the flamingo camp. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, on the outside looking in, you might just see it as a big squatters camp, but the people that live there do, you know, it, it is their community. It is their home. Mm -hmm. It is the place that they have put down roots for the most part, but there's crime. There's a fair amount of crime. And unfortunately, you know, like in Post's uh, case, somehow, somewhere there, crime caught up to him, which is really, really sad and unfortunate. It is. Uh, it's a, it is a, an enormous challenge for the sheriff's office to investigate crime there because no one is talking. Yeah. They don't like them there. They don't want them there. And they will clam up and refuse to say anything and hopes to just get them to leave. And yeah. so it is really hard to solve crimes that have happened in that area because nobody's saying anything. Right. Right. Nobody is. And it's pretty difficult for um Poe's family to do anything about this is there in Tennessee his aunt is going there or maybe already did go there at the end of May he's got an aunt and this aunt actually did not know anything about Poe her name is Lori Brammer and she seems to be representing Poe's family. I'm told that Poe's mother is not in a position right now to, uh, you know, be talking publicly. But sure. um, Poe's aunt, Lori Brammer, is, is you know, trying to be the, the family member on top of things and going yeah. for some, uh, you know, there've been a, there's been a vigil in Tennessee. There's been a vigil um, there at Slab City and, you know, right. trying to communicate with the police and figure out what's gone on here. Um, but, you know, still in the very early stages of knowing exactly what went on here. Yeah. Yeah. This well, is a really... It takes um, that, as we know, 
you know, yes, from what does. do we know about true crime? It takes vigilant family members asking lots of questions, it being does. involved, asking for answers. It takes that, or these cases just tend to fall by the wayside to the ones who do have loud and active family members. So right. I'm very glad that there is a family member that's able to step up. In Me that too. Way. It also takes vocal media, which is one of the reasons yeah. why we covered this case. There was a call out for, they were actually calling out for like newspapers in the uh, Los Angeles area to take this case. But um, we said, hey, we will too. You know, more people speaking Poe's name uh -huh. and talking about this case. It's more. It's very important because these cases do just fall by the wayside. But yeah. one of the things that I feel like is really important for us to consider, because Slab City is not the only place like it in the U.S. There are many Slab yeah. Cities, you know, mm -hmm. around the country, is that when someone goes missing, they may, in fact, have gone to a place like Slab City. Yeah. You know, Poe said, I want to go somewhere where I feel like I am accepted and I belong. Yeah. And that's one of the things about the community in Slab City is that there is a lot of acceptance. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like it's really sad for someone to feel like they have to go many states away, obviously, to a dangerous place to feel accepted. Mm hmm and maybe this is something we need to become more aware of in our own communities. Yeah. Um, you know, to provide safe acceptance for everyone right where they're at in their own home, in their own hometowns. Yeah. Uh, but that's really what drove Poe, not only to seek that for himself, but to provide it for other people in the LGBT community, which is, you know, it is, is really, that's, that's a good legacy you know, yeah. for Poe to have left behind because yeah. at 21, we don't have a lot of a legacy to leave behind, unfortunately, because yeah. we, we shouldn't be gone by then. Yeah. But Poe certainly did have a love of other people and want to help others. Yeah. And uh, that made us really want to reach out and get more information and cover this case. Absolutely. And of course, we will keep it on our radar <clears throat> and share yes. anything that comes from it that we learn. And again, We'll keep the signal boost up, and we hope that others will as well mm -hmm. to help continue, uh, you know, an encouragement of getting this case actually solved. For sure. And, you know, we do have some connection to friends in the situation, and so, we, you know, we may get some information because there, there are literally only two news articles out about this yeah. case, which is horrifying to me. Yeah. And then the Facebook post that we found that started this mm -hmm. whole thing. Yeah. So obviously there needs to be more information and more, you know, coverage, but we're going to keep providing it and we will ask those sources that we have to keep, you know, us up to date and we will definitely continue. Absolutely. As yep. you said, you know, giving this a signal boost. Yeah. Well, this is our Tuesday case. And yeah. so we will be back on Wednesday with another new case and back on Wednesday night with some case updates. And we definitely have some stuff brewing for you guys, as you can imagine. Little <laughs> Marky Means is at it again. Oh, my goodness. The the Dave Alvalo case never stops giving more information, does it? <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be back Thursday night. So that's seven. the live stream on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Mountain here on YouTube. And it's also on our Facebook page. And then on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific is the Psychic Hour, and we will be back uh, live streaming for that. Yep. So, you know, stay connected. Make sure you listen to everything. Please take a moment to just like, subscribe, and share. You have no idea what kind of a boost that is for us. Yeah. So subscribing to us, whether you're on YouTube or Spotify or Apple or wherever you're listening to us, make sure you subscribe and you know like us share us comment all of those things help to give us a boost we are really growing and we want to keep growing and giving you know more and more signal boosts to more and more cases so please help us by doing that like subscribe and share is the easiest way for you to help us out absolutely yeah so thanks for joining us as you know we are true crime paranormal with the psychic sisters thanks for being here take care